uh, hope you guys are staying safe and well out on the east coast of the country. We're trying. Everybody, everybody's trying to stay safe, and we're we're quarantined. We're locked down. I'm in the basement of my sister in law's house because that was the only house that was available when we got here and we haven't been able to buy one yet so uh, uh we're doing our best to stay safe um i also am wearing my oozle hoodie uh chris was giving me crap uh last time that i didn't have an oozle shirt on um <laughs> but i i'm looking forward to the opportunity to talk a little bit more um this is one of the things that i've missed the most um and we would talk all the time um even when i was back in utah about like hey, it would be great if we could just record some of these conversations that we're having where we go more in depth on a topic than you, you're you usually able to in a monthly call or even in a consulting call with a client. You just don't get into the weeds. Um, and sometimes you, you're worried about what you can and can't say to a client. So this, this allows us to speak a little bit more frankly about some topics and, and really get into the meat uh, of the subject. Um, today, I think we're going to talk about uh, lead bullets. Uh, yeah. It was one, I think it was tip five um, uh, in the ones, or four or five in the ones that I, I gave out last week. Um, really good blog. Uzzle has been putting out really good stuff. Um, but lead bullets, I think, needs to be, needs to have a lead in. And so what I, what I was going to talk about is something that I'm very passionate about, which is kind of like my underlying theory of marketing. And mm -hmm. this may not seem all that revolutionary now, um, but when we came up with it at Uzzle, it was quite revolutionary. And I think it'll, it's a good kind of guiding light for what to do in, in a time with so much uncertainty. And the reality of it is marketing, the tactics of marketing, somebody who's been in it long enough sees tactics go up and down. So everybody will be like, hey, this is the next silver bullet tactic. We have figured out how to fool all of the people to showing our stuff more often. And then, uh, the platforms get good at sweeping that out with their algorithms. And then uh, businesses literally rise and fall on, on these marketing tactics. At the base of underneath all of these tactics, underneath everything else, the thing that the potential customer, the potential student wants is literally they just want the right information told to them in the right way at the right time. Uh, Google, when I was out at Google Marketing Live last year, it was overwhelming that people don't hate ads. They hate bad ads. And a bad ad is the wrong message to the wrong person at the wrong time. In fact, up to three quarters of people believe that uh, are, are happy. They're, they're actually happy when they get interrupted in their shopping cycle with something that was a better fit for them. Mm. And, and, that, and that comes back to the basis of marketing, the right information, to the right person at the right time. Like I said in my blog, the right person hasn't changed all that much in this, but the right message and the right, uh, and the right timing of that message has changed tremendously. I'm, I'm gonna give one, one example before we get into the lead bullet stuff again um, on, on the messaging and the timing. Think about, just think about masks. Three weeks ago, even four weeks ago, you would have looked crazy for even talking about uh, wearing a mask. And then maybe you're like, oh, this is a real thing. We need to get all of our employees masks when we go in and uh, when we're seeing a new student or we're uh, inviting a new guest into the salon. Like a week later, that would have been already out of date. Mm. Like already out of date, we would have been saying like, no, what you need to be doing is getting all of those masks and getting them to a hospital. Right. And then this week, right, like just a few days ago, it seems like a, a month ago, but just a few days ago, they said, actually, if you're going to go out in public, you probably should be wearing a mask. Right. Now, they're not saying go and get an N95 mask and build a stockpile of these and hoard them away in some warehouse or something like that. But there's the just the messaging on masks alone has changed so much to the point where like two weeks ago, it would have been a completely different message than it was today. And it's had two or three ups and downs. And that's why there's no one tactic, there's no one thing that's going to solve this process for you. There, there's no, this, this problem for you. There's no one thing that is going to be the right marketing thing right now. Which, is, which brings you, us to the point, uh, I mean, really the, this comes from, I'm gonna put in another plug for this book because if you've not read this book and you are living the life of owning a business right now, like literally go, 
buy a, a Kindle or an Audible copy of The Hard Thing About Hard Things. He is so good about telling you the straight dope about how he handled the situation. Very similar to this. It seems like this has never happened before. Things like this have happened before. Okay. Things with this kind of gravity of consequence have happened before. Businesses have weathered it, and what you do now can can definitely change that. But but the the example comes from. Um, one of his lead engineers says, hey, like Microsoft just came out with this product. It basically blows our product out of the water. We're a young startup. We have a small customer base and all of our customers have disappeared. Now Microsoft is selling a product that's five times faster than us. Right. And so they, they do what everybody else does, right? Like you, you wallow for a second and then you're like, wait, what about harebrained idea? Mm -hmm. What about this thing that could change the game completely. Um, and one of the senior engineers who's been up and down through, through a bunch of the product life cycles uh, on, on the products that they were selling, saying was like, hey, these, these silver bullets you're looking for, they sound great. They don't exist. You're gonna have to meet this problem with lead bullets. And, and Stephanie and I were just talking about what, what lead bullets means. Uh, for for every business, it's going to mean a little bit different, but really what that means is it's a, it's a constant triage and it's focusing back back to what is the right message for my client at this time. Right. What and is the right message for the potential students at this time? Yeah, and I, I think we've seen that change a lot, you know, to kind of follow that timeline with schools. It was like in just different industries. Uh, a few weeks ago, depending on where you were in the country, the right message to be sending was how you were keeping people safe while you were still open. Right. That's done. The right message to be sending now is you better be telling people that you're open online. Because right. if you still like got messaging about like, oh, you know, we're washing our hands, we're doing this, it's just not relevant anymore because your business is closed for the most part, for most people. Right, um, a really great example of this is one, literally one of the examples that Stephanie used in her uh, social media for marketing uh, during the COVID-19 crisis, two days later, like was talking about how, what all of the steps they were taking to stay open. And then two days later, they had to go back and create a whole new message. Right. And, and right. That, that's just what this means right now. Well, and here's what I'm worried about is I'm seeing a lot of schools right now who they don't have that open online sign up or on anywhere and this this to me is the lead bullets thing it's like okay if if your website if your social media is and i've seen this with many people it's like we are closed well when you dig into that a little bit more they're closed at their physical location they're open online, as in their admissions people are taking virtual tours or having chats online, right. they're doing distance learning. And it's like, hey, you gotta take a step back and look at your Google My Business, look at your social media, look at your website. Is that message clear to someone? Is that so, so open online there? That, that is a really excellent point. And uh, the people at Oozle can remember me literally yelling about this sometimes. Like sometimes we get so focused on things like ads or landing pages or, or ad copy or something like that, that we forget the places that our customers usually look for information for us. The very, very most important place to put the information about your business is your homepage. The yeah. second most important place is probably Google My Business. And after that, it's probably your social media platforms. And I love the idea of a sign on the door. I remember having a conversation with, uh, with one of our clients at one point about like, hey, I have kind of this rural campus. Do you think it makes sense for us to put a banner up at the high school, high school baseball games? And I'm like, yes. Like if you have a rural campus, like you want that, that is eyeballs in that small, small town. Right, like the, the local minor league baseball team or the local college baseball team, that is eyeballs in front of the right person at the right time. Sometimes we forget, we, we think that everything is all digital and, and the physical message doesn't matter anymore, but like signs at your location, put up a banner. Like I've been seeing sandwich boards out in front of businesses uh, giving the right message. This is the right sort of like raw 
marketing at its purest form, how do we get the message in front of the people? How do we crawl over the obstacles to get the message in front of the right person at the right time? Right. And, and don't make it hard for me. You know, like I don't, I don't want to have to call a school to right. ask them. So how, what are, what are my options right now? Or like, what, what are you guys doing right now? Or even risk not getting an answer on the phone at all. Like, light up the neon sign and tell people how are you operating as a business right now whether that's strictly online okay that's fine i can be online at my house what does that mean for how i can interact with you and what actions i can take today with you yeah like and and take out any impediments that you can see in somebody's way i i love what you're saying like like light up that neon sign like i i was i just installed some heat mapping software on the on the website for the company that i'm working on and i'm seeing things that i'm like hey what was that weird thing that somebody did Mm -hmm. like i i was wondering why people weren't clicking on my link that i had in the banner of the top of my website telling talking about this COVID 19 stuff and and what i what it turned out is like i didn't have the link set to live i did i didn't go and underline it which is kind of a universal sign of this is clickable text on a website even though it was a link the part that was underlined wasn't a link because I I went and made an edit afterwards. Like part of the crawling over any obstacle that you can possibly get to get in front of the right person at the right time means also going back. Um, One of the things we, I talked about constantly when, when I was there at Oozle was when you break process right now, everybody's process is broken. Like I I should just lead with that. If, If your process feels cumbersome and broken, welcome. Every business owner right now feels like they're they're running around with their hair on fire trying to figure out what to do next and how to triage things. But when processes get broken, what is built up in those processes are safeguards, safeguards of things that could go wrong. So part of lead bullets is you're going to have to, after you go and you try and get this message out, figure out any way that you can to go and look for clues about whether it's resonating or whether it's the right message. Mm-hmm. Like they're like, a big one, I, I, I still check in every once in a while with Uzzle, and a big one that I know that you guys have been looking at, clues that you're starting to see are things like, hey, the demand's actually coming back to the market. Right. Like, what, what, what are some of the queries that you guys are seeing over there that are starting to come back to the market that should be a clue that like, oh, wait, even if I thought like, hey, we got to help people was the right message, it turns out it's actually, we got to enroll people is the right message. What clue tipped you guys off to that? I mean, it's definitely the the uptick in searches around education and school. And I mean, we saw in the last week, we, we had a Google Trends chart come to us for, and this was representing search nationwide, but beauty school near me or best beauty school near me up 41%. And our hunch and the way that we're interpreting this is in the last two weeks, you've seen massive amounts of people laid off. Like this is really, you know, that when you look at, okay, everything shut down and then we moved into the next phase of like, whoa, people are losing their jobs. The other thing that we saw correlate with this was, whoa, people are stuck at home. Yes. And so the two things that we're seeing that we're, looking at that are sending signals to us are we've seen an uptick in search for things related to education, new skill sets. Um, And again, we have some past data from a past recession where we know that the psychology around, um, you know, a certain group of people, well, any group of people really like losing your job makes you really think about a couple things. One, what do I really want to do with my life? What do I have a passion in? What am I excited about? Because do I really want to go back to something that I didn't love anyway? Right. Um, Two, if I'm going to change my career path or pursue this passion, I have to get skills that qualify me for it. Right. Um, And again, I think the biggest thing that we're seeing is the other big thing that we're seeing is um, display ads. Okay. So, I said in my PPC webinar, display ads are like little billboards for your company that follow people around the internet. 
traditionally, right, our recommendation has been do search network first, you know, right. people who are actively going and searching and then do display ads. Well, search demand has gone down. It's coming, I think it is coming back up, but it's not up to where it was before COVID hit. But I'll tell you what skyrocketed, people clicking on display ads. Well, and, and, and it's such like, you bring up such good points here is like, display is sometimes seen as the redheaded stepchild of, of the of the kind of paid ads on the internet thing. It's like, oh yeah, if you don't have any, if you don't have any more demand somewhere else, I guess you could do paid ads. But like, there's a, there's a bunch of things that have changed about the dynamics of the situation that make display and YouTube super, super important, right? Stephanie has gone over this in a couple of webinars. I've seen her talk about like, the, the inventory is about to go way up, or not about to, uh, has gone way up for the number of people who are on their phones, especially on mobile mobile devices. Like you, th there's going to be a glut of display, uh, of display inventory. The other thing is people are searching for how to's. Like I literally cut my son's hair using a YouTube how to video. It's not my passion in life. I literally never want to do it again. I want everybody to get better so fast that I can send him to somebody who is professionally trained and licensed. It's like I never felt that more acutely than I do right now, the need for someone to be licensed to cut, to cut hair. But the, the other thing is, is on top of that inventory being cheap and being the, the place where your audience is currently hanging out, I, I did a webinar about like six months ago on YouTube ads. And in it, I talked about how the dynamics of how somebody searches for for a school or for a product changes has changed with this up and coming generation. Previously, people would reach out to you and they would ask you to inform them like, hey, tell me about beauty school. Right. Because we use the internet like a replacement for a phone book. The up and coming generation has never not had the internet. If they cannot find the information exactly when they're looking at looking for it, like you will hear people literally say this is like, uh, I'll just wait for them to retarget me. Like they, they, they will just be waiting around for an ad to come and chase them down rather than bookmark your site or remember what your brand name is. They're like, ah, they've got a fix, so they're going to come find Right, find I'll me. run into them again. Right, and, and, the, and what it means is that their consideration windows are taking longer and longer as they spend more and more time before they become a lead. I mean, may, maybe the consideration window hasn't actually gotten any shorter or any longer, but when they become a lead has been pushed all the way to the back to the point where most people of the younger set, when they're, when they're filling out a form or they calling somebody, they've already made the decision before they got there. And what we've seen, I, I, I've seen the data from so many clients and I know Stephanie can talk to this too, of like the actual sales cycle for somebody starting beauty school is not like, hey, uh, I think about beauty school this week, I call somebody and I'm enrolled next week. It's like six weeks to six months is the typical path for somebody. Okay. And if you can catch people early enough, what that does is it gives the data and it gives the AI and the machine learning that is driving all of these like super, super smart ads that Google and Facebook are running now, like the sort of stuff where you think that your Alexa is listening to you, it's really just smart ads. The ads are getting so smart about knowing how and when to target you that you don't even notice it happening. It's like somebody's creeping around your house. That's what you think. Right. What allows those ads to get that creepy is that they start tracking you before you even start searching for the key terms that, that, that uh, you might be searching for when you're starting a beauty school or searching for your kid's dentist or searching for an orthodontist or something like that or someone to change out your HVA sy system. They start search, they start targeting you before you even, maybe before you even know that you're looking for them. Right. So like right now is an ideal time for you, like that, that, that gets back to the timing, right? We've talked a lot about messaging. There's a lot of good stuff about messaging right now on like, how do you, how do you keep your social media positive and all that sort of stuff? The timing is like right now, you should be getting in front of people with display and YouTube. It's on sale, like Stephanie said, it's, it's right there ready for people who don't even know yet, right? Like we are talking about like potentially a 10 to 15% unemployment already right now. 
like that is a huge number uh, that that's somewhere in in the 20 to 30 million people are transitioning in between jobs or not knowing if they're going to come back to the job that that they just just left it's the ideal time to start targeting people with that so dave you know let's say that i'm a small business owner and i come to you and i say like because this is the kind of person i am right yeah give me some sort of checklist of these lead bullets so i can go like temp check these areas for myself you talked about website website yes. is a it's your home base for your business online it's still a place that people know they can find you and get information about you well uh, and the reason that the website is so important is because they expect it if they okay. don't see it on your website they're going to assume that you don't do it or you haven't addressed it they're not going to go and look somewhere else if it's not there the, that's why we call it Rome, right? Like right. all the roads connect back into Rome. If it's not there, they may not check out over here to see if your hours have changed. Right. No? Sorry. So web website's a great one. Um, I really like what Oozle has been doing with physical location. Like stop thinking about con collecting, dema uh, collecting demand and pre-lead stuff. Start thinking about the post-lead stuff. Is somebody talking with this person on the phone? Do they have the correct script to talk about this? I, 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 Rob made a really great recommendation a couple of weeks ago. Rob from SalesCom made a really great recommendation from a couple of weeks ago where he's like, if you've sent all of your admissions people home and told them like, hey, we closed up shop, like go chase them down and get them to work from home for you, right? Tell them how to do a virtual tour. Get into your building and film a virtual tour if you can, right? Like it doesn't have to be flashy, but like, Every time that you're interacting with a human, that's the one that people are going to forget. Like right now, uh, I'm currently working for a construction company and we're, we're like designing and printing out signs that say like, hey, uh, the governor has uh, declared us a or an essential business. We are following social distancing rules because what we don't want, want to have happen is like for our reputation to get tarnished by like, hey, I don't know what you think you're you get, you're doing right now by having somebody work on the outside of your uh, on the outside of your house. Now we never actually have to interact with the, with the with the customer in a physical sense, so so we are able to do that thankfully. But like we don't want even the perception right. when we run into our client or we want run into that next layer of people. So any anything that you can do with signage or verbiage or scripts that you're giving people on how you answer the phone update your message system if you have a if you have a message go in there and update that this is all marketing oh you know uh, that brings up for me that we've been changing for a lot of clients lately is your your email that automatically goes yes. out after they fill out a form yes. so many schools have an email that automatically goes out that's like we're gonna call you in for a tour that's the next step because in a normal world, that is the next step. Like you gotta change your message in that email to again, be contextual to how you're truly operating today. Yeah, so like almost every business has parts of their business that just run on autopilot. Mm -hmm. They just run on like, hey, I didn't even have to think about that because like uh, in, in, my, in my world, it's, it's referrals, right? Like people don't even track or think about referrals because it's like, oh, referrals just happen right? Like referral, how, how am I going to affect somebody talking with their friend? I mean, I won't get into the reasons why that's a bad way to think, but like in, in the construction business and the, in the business that I'm working in, like they just take that as a given, as a non, uh, as a non-starter. When all of this stuff happened, when you have to close your business for months, like those things change. The things that were once on autopilot are no longer on autopilot. So if you're looking for a hard checklist, I would just start at the very beginning of the first time that somebody becomes aware of you as a business that they might want to do business with and march your way all the way down the product line and make sure that the message is exactly right in each one of those steps. And yeah. I would look back at every couple of days, at least every week, because it's shifting that fast, right? Like, we could have an announcement from doc, Dr. Fauci tomorrow that could turn your marketing plan on its head. And so you got to be coming back like, hey, what do I come back, come back to and say like, okay, how does that change this step in the process or that step in the process? Right. Like now, now we like, I work in a, it, it, it's stuff as stupid as this, right? Like 
people are like, Hey, make your own mask out of a bandana. Like I can't, I can't really do that in, in the, in the community of, of people who work for my business. Like there, there, there are just considerations that you have to take, take into consideration at every step of your business. And you have to think about every step and how it's going to be perceived by your potential customers. I mean, you're exactly right. And again, I think that's why marketing in April has felt a little checklisty because it is literally what we're doing for our clients. We're starting with ads. Why? Because ads are the thing that go out and knock on people's door. Like, and so are we changed all the messaging and images even on our ads, right? Like we're not showing just images of pretty hair anymore. We're showing images of girls at home on laptops. Right. Like to help people envision what online learning could be, right? Right. Um, we, so we changed images, we changed messaging, we've changed calls to action, we've changed landing pages, right? Because after your ad, somebody's gonna hit your landing page. So the landing page needs to adjust. Right. After they fill out a form on the landing page, they're gonna hit a thank you page. Your thank you page needs to adjust. What we've been adding there for a lot of clients are their virtual tours. It's right. like, thanks for filling out the form. While you're waiting for us to get in touch, watch the video of our tour and their admissions people can then kind of start the conversation with, oh, did you get a chance to watch the video? And if you didn't, let's watch it together right now. And right. You know, use that to kick off the conversation. Then it's moved to the website because again, what we see is if somebody becomes aware of you through an ad and they hit your landing page and they fill out a form, they're probably going to jump to your website because they want to engage with you more and try and find more information themselves. So get your, get a banner, get your calls to action changed on your website. We've actually, and I know this is, this is typically a faux pas, but again, we're in different times. We've been doing pop-ups for a lot of our clients that literally get in someone's face as the open sign of, let me be very clear with you about what our school is doing right now. That That's exactly right. Like, and, and this is, this is the, like, Stephanie just went through like 10 things that like you would think are common sense, but I've, I've been working in marketing for a long time. We've worked with a lot of agencies. If you have somebody who is stuck on tactics, if you have somebody who can't think through what what is the right message for the right person at the right time, you're gonna have to double check your marketing agency to make sure that they're thinking about this stuff. This like this seems commonplace to to you and I, Stephanie, but there's so many people who have not even thought. Like, I I, I would venture to bet I, I I would put good money on that a business owner knows instinctually better what to do in this scenario from a marketing standpoint than a huge percentage of the people working at agencies. Yeah. We're stuck on like, Oh, we're going to write a guest blog post this month. And, and they're, they were just driving that thing straight off of a cliff right now. Right. right? Like they, they don't know how to do anything any different. So you need a, you, if you had, have a marketing agency, make sure that you have a marketing agency that can consult with you and think through the issue on the level that we're talking about right now. Almost everybody at Oozle Media could go and go and have that conversation that we just had with, without even thinking about it. But that's not a given um, when you're out there looking for a marketing partner. Right. And that's why I think this month, you know, to kind of bring this full circle for us at Oozle, this has not been a particularly like creative boutique advertising kind of month. This has been a lead bullets month when it comes to marketing. It's It's literally getting back to the fundamental pipelines that most people are going to use with you and making sure that everything from the ad all the way to the thank you page, all the way to the website, all the way to the email that they're getting after they fill out the form, all of that messaging has been changed to truly reflect the way that our clients are operating in this climate right now. Yeah. I, I absolutely agree. And, and the, the biggest thing that I, my last parting uh, note on this is just when you think that you've got all of the boxes checked, something's going to change and uncheck all of the boxes for you right. until we are back to normal. And that's going to take months, not weeks. Like until we are fully back to normal, the messaging, the things that you need to be saying, the number of times that you've got to go back and go back through and check the boxes. like 
your business may have closed, but your marketing actually needs more time and more effort put, put into it. So like if, if you've got a bunch of stuff that you're worried about that you can't do, one thing that you can do right now is make sure your messaging is right and go back and check it off. Right. Be kind to your future self, right? That's, that's right. That's, cool. that's a famous oozalism. <laughs> Dave, thanks for your time today. And, you know, we'll get on and do this again soon and hit yeah. another topic. And I don't know, maybe one day we'll start like a podcast or something. Let's do it. I'm in. I got nothing but time. <laughs> okay, Dave, I'll speak to you later. Stay safe.